Hello, everyone. Today we'll be looking at part one of the citric acid cycle. So we'll be looking at the storage and release of energy from the carbohydrates. So just a quick overview. So we know that stage two in oxidative metabolism is the citric acid cycle. And again, this is in the mitochondrial matrix. Again, we can see that here. So again, big picture. Slightly detailed, we can see here's a citric acid cycle where we have some CO2, some phosphate, NAD plus and FDH. Remember, acetyl CoA go in. Remember, we get a pruvate that can go through pruvate metabolism. Again, we can either get our NADH, CO2. But yeah, we'll look at this more deep, more detail. And again, citric acid cycle reactions occur in the mitochondrial matrix. So just a quick overview, we talked about pruvate. So in this case, we're following the pruvate dehydrogenase reaction where we have our CoA and NAD go in and we produce our NADH and CO2, forming acetyl-CoA, which is 2-carbon. Then this forms with oxaloacetate through citrate synthase, forming citrate in the citrate acid cycle. And again, this is aerobic glycolysis. And metabolism. So acetyl CoA. So acetyl CoA enters the citric acid cycle. It has an acyl or acetyl group which carrier which has two carbons. And then we also have a acetyl coenzyme group. So the coenzyme A actually has 21 carbons, but this doesn't go into the into the citric acid cycle. It gets removed, as we'll see. So again, it has different names. So the citric acid cycle is also called the tricarboxylic acid cycle, or T TAC. Or the Krebs cycle, named after Hans Krebs. So this is named due to the acids having three carbons. Since it is a cycle, it does not have an end product per se, and the cycle is regenerative. So we can see that it goes in that circle, as we see here. So types of reaction in the synthesis cycle include decarboxylation, which again is a loss of carboxylic acid through decarboxylase enzymes. We have oxidation reduction reactions, which we've seen quite a bit so far, where there's a loss or gain of electrons, you through dehydrogenase or hydrogenase enzymes, so example, NAD plus and FADH. FAD use this. We have hydration and dehydration reactions, which is the addition or removal of H2O through hydratase or dehydratase. We also have phosphorylation and dephosphorylation, which is the loss gain for inorgan inorganic phosphate. And these use kinases for adding and phosphatases for losing. So just a big picture overview, so the very big picture. So we can see here that both carbohydrates, fatty acids, and amino acids, and we'll talk about these later in later lectures, can all be eventually become, can become acetyl-CoA. But in most normal circumstances, carbohydrates are the main source. So during the citric acid cycle, we produce three NAD plus, NADH and one FADH. These go to the electron transport chain and become as electron carriers and help form ATP. Then we also produce two CO2 and two carbons. So two carbons, important. but again, CO2 is a waste product. So this needs to be, essentially, this is what we breathe out. We breathe out our CO2. And we also form something called GTP, which is essentially ATP as well. Guanine triphosphate. So again, it's really important to follow the carbons. So there are six, five, and four carbon molecules plus two carbon acetyl group fed into the beginning of the cycle. So we have our two carbon acetyl group of the acetyl-CoA merge with oxal acetate, which is four carbons. So we know four plus two equals six. So now we have our six carbon citrate, which then we see our citrate losing one carbon, becoming alpha ketoglutarate, which is five carbon. Then again, we lose another carbon, when we form succinate, and we're back to four, and then we don't lose any more carbon. So that's that. As we said, there's two CO2 produced per citric acid cycle. So remember that the six carbon molecules include citrate and isocitrate. So we can see citrate equals six. Five carbons include alpha ketoglutarate. Four carbons include succinate, fumarate, malate, and oxaloacetate. And our true carbon is that acetyl group and acetyl. And our seal coa So here's the fully detailed overview. 
We'll go through it like we did with glycolysis, looking at each step of the cycle. But the beginning of the cycle is the formation, is a combination of oxaloacetate and acetyl-CoA using citrate synthase to form citrate. So that, that CoA, that coenzyme A is removed from that acetyl group. So the acetyl group goes in, but we need, again, important here is this needs water for this reaction to occur. And that four carbon and two carbon molecule form citrate, which is six carbon. So step one, the synthesis of citrate. So we have our oxaloacetate, which is four carbon, our acetyl-CoA in that in water. We produce citrate where the coenzyme is removed. So here we can see the coenzyme is removed. This is a hydration because again we're using water and we break the carbon carbon bonds. We need a hydratase and a lyase because we're splitting. And we need and the enzyme is called citrate synthase. Step two, or no, sorry. So again, we see here there are two carbons from acetyl CoA plus the four carbons of oxaloacetate eat the six carbon, citrate. Coenzyme A does not continue through the cycle, it just donates acetyl CoA. So remember we, that CoA had 21 carbons, so that's why we don't see large carbon numbers. So this is removed from the, the molecule. It just donates the acetyl group. So the synthase enzyme, so again, this is citrate synthase catalyze synthesis of new molecules. So citrate, essentially a citrate synthesis, if that makes sense. So this is kind of a merge of step two and three where we go from citrate to isocitrate. So we have our citrate and the product of cis econinate. So it's kind of like a bridge between two and three. So just keep that in mind. And we have H2O. It's kind of, so here we have losing H2O, and then we use it. So we kind of have like this little bridge step where we add water, remove water, to change it to cis incontinate to isocitrate. This is a dehydration, dehydrogenase, and aconitase. So aconitase is a hydratase enzyme. So although the diagram doesn't show it because the cycle only operates in one direction, these reactions are reversible. Enzymes that catalyze reversible reactions will only be named in for one direction, in this case, the hydration reaction. So this kind of in-between part is usually skipped and just go from that citrate to isocitrate. So step three is now isocitrate to alpha cleated glutarate. So as we mentioned, this is now going to five carbons. So this uses isocitrate dehydrogenase. So as we can see here, we see that dehydrogenase. So we have the oxidation of isocitrate, which generates NADH, and we note the dehydrogenase enzyme. We also have the decarboxylation of isocitrate and causes the loss of CO2 slash loss of carboxylic acid functional group through decarboxylation. So dehydrogenase, so we produce the NADH, and also decarboxylation producing the first CO2 of the citrate acid cycle. So remember, when naming the enzyme that catalyzes more than one biochemical process, dehydrogenation will take precedence. Hence, isocitrate and dehydrogenase. So we'll just look at step three for now, but we'll finish the rest of the citrate acid cycle steps in the next lecture. See you then.